Um, one of the things that we were talking about this week was was Postgres and what is Postgres and and what does that have to do with with blockchain? So why don't we why don't we talk a little bit about what are our plans with Postgres and what is Postgres? Okay, um, on the uh, what is uh, it's a relational enterprise relational database, uh, open source. Um, I think it's the best uh, relational database. Um, I've used it for a long, long time. Um, and uh, I used to be pretty well into it. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't had to build anything with it for quite a while myself, but um, uh, I'm a big fan. Uh, it, it was uh, always the fastest, uh, the most compliant uh, uh, SQL standard database. And um, uh, it had a lot of amazing features, uh, geospatial, all, all types of really cool stuff. So mm -hmm. um, as to how we're looking at it and why we're even, you know, why, why are we talking about it? Um, <clears throat> we use it a lot internally, of course, but uh, we're looking to, to integrate, uh, and it's almost like an interchain where, you know, we're connecting blockchain to uh, traditional products and services, um, and this would be one of them that would be really powerful because mm -hmm. um, on the one hand, and we don't know absolutely where we're going to hit yet first, but uh, you know, we're just starting to look at it. But um, uh, on triggers, I mean, just the simple fact that just like a, uh, an interchain uh, between Dragon Chain and Ethereum, um, that we have a watcher and a publisher uh, contract, right? And so those would be um, directly applied on, on, on the trigger side so that an event on your Dragon Chain node could cause uh, an entry or a change or something to happen in your database, um, your more traditional relational database. And on the other side, a change in your database could trigger a call out, uh, whether it's just to, to uh, ledger a transaction or to actually you know, throw out something that ends up on Ethereum, you know, doing some operation in a smart contract. Interesting, yeah. interesting. So um, if you did do an integration like that, would it, uh, what's the difference between relationship, relationship, re relationship databases and a, and blockchain or a dragon chain, and where would you, what type of data would you store on both, and and what's the use case for it? Um, uh, and this is a pretty, pretty deep subject, right? Um, uh, we take a, a lot of uh, discussion, but uh, basically, you know, the re relational or the the the. Uh, uh, old time traditional good solid enterprise databases where um, you have immediate consistency. That is once you write something, it's there. So if somebody else queries that same table, the data is there. Versus uh, non-relational, um, you know, maybe more modern database where they're built for uh, scaling and uh, built for um, uh, multi-threaded applications where you're splitting uh, data across uh, thousands of nodes and doing some operation um, where that has eventual consistency. That is when you write something in there, someone else might read it and it might not be there yet, but it will eventually. So you have to treat them different ways. Um, and uh, the weird thing about it is, you know, I kind of, uh, well, some people uh, can consider blockchain to be somewhat, you know, it, it is uh, eventually, eventually consistent, depending mm -hmm. upon what blockchain you're talking about, because I might write something that you might not see yet. Um, so so uh, you're, you're talking about the differences between immediate consistency and eventual consistency, right? right? So, right. so let's, let's land on that first. Yeah, and help yeah. Okay, so, so what's immediate consistency? Uh, that, that's when I, I write something to a table, and anyone else with access to that table will see that result as soon as the uh, transaction is completed. Right? Okay. Um, whereas eventual would be, I write it and it might be on some node over here. You might be operating on some node over there. Sooner or later, all of the nodes will be in sync, right? Um, so now, now it sounds like I'd want the first one, right? Immediate mm -hmm. consistency. Now, why would I want to deploy something built off the second one with eventual consistency? Usually for for scaling reasons, like you know, if you're if you're uh, Google, if you're um, crawling web pages and needing to do operations to, to do whatever they do to score them, whether it's number of words, you know, the simple, the old uh, uh, algorithm uh, 
where it's just counting words, right? Um, that uh, trying to put a lock on a row in a, a single uh, data uh, database isn't scalable enough to hit the tens of millions or billions of, of pages that they have to do that with every day. And you know, it depends on what you're doing, but anything like that, uh, you know, Facebook or LinkedIn or other social networks where you have millions of people hitting data at the same time and you have to build feeds for them, mm-hmm the same type of thing um, and you can do types of risk assessments and stuff on the data prior to writing it too is that something else that can take place that's that's something that we, yeah, we you can apply and it's interesting too because um, uh, from from pretty early days with dragon chain um, and I don't talk about it too much because it's usually a very small audience that cares about about this but I kind of consider dragon chain to be um, a a, a spectrum of consistency and you know we call it a spectrum of trust usually but it's also on the other side that if uh, if I own a business node I can have immediate consistency because it is uh, effectively centralized I can decentralize it but but as soon as data is there I have it right um, and yet if you are getting a feed of my data <clears throat> you could uh, accept it as soon as I write uh, a, a level one business node block, right? You could say, okay, that's good enough for me, right? You could also, though, decide to say, let me wait until we have enterprise governance at level three, or let me wait until uh, there's a notary at level four that somebody that I trust on the outside says, yes, this really happened. Or if it's a, you know, a extremely uh, valuable or um, sensitive transaction, you could say, I'm going to wait until at least uh, you know a few billion dollars worth of hash power is applied on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, and then you can say now I will accept this as as good data, right? So it, it's it's weird. We have we have kind of a mix on this side, but we're we're trying to hit uh, because we've seen a lot of applications uh, where we needed something that had uh, a little more horsepower for you know queries, you know, typical things you'd build in a, an app, so. Interesting. So um, as you start to look at the, the tie between Dragon Chain and, and Postgres, uh, would that just be kind of, would it be a DBA? Would it be just be able to work within Postgres and, and connect in to Dragon Chain commands, yeah, like uh, right Dragon Chain? Or, or yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, <clears throat> the simplest form is the triggers that I, I mentioned at the beginning there. Um, there are a couple of other things that, that would be a little more complex, but could be in- interesting because uh, you know typical um, uh, data model da- data <clears throat> design stuff uh, I guess would be that if I have a lot of uh, complex data with complex relationships in my in my old relational database from the 90s right uh, you, you would have a lot of that going on you would want to put as much of the logic as possible or at least a lot of the logic specifically dealing with arranging the data in the database in a stored procedure where mm-hmm. the code is running right on top of the database where it's tuned very effectively for what data is there and, and how it's modeled. And what we're wanting to do um, is, and, and Postgres is uh, pretty amazing uh, in, in, in this, that they have multiple languages. They have the simplest um, uh, all the way up to you know, I know they have Perl. I can't remember what other languages they have, but it's it's kind of crazy because you can write uh, um, more advanced logic in the database, working directly with on, and on top of the data. Um, and we want really to tie that into blockchain because then we can effectively say, just like <clears throat> how a level one, because we have a hybrid architecture, so that level one node can run any language. You know, we've demonstrated uh, shell scripts. We've demonstrated, um, of course, Node, and and uh, there's there's some Go smart contracts out there. Um, and we support Java and uh, C sharp and, and what whatever else, right? Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> you imagine if we said the same thing uh, that you write a stored procedure in uh, Postgres, whatever language supported in Postgres doesn't matter to us, and we store that so it's provably. Uh, the same, and we'll have to figure out a couple of things on how we want to do it effectively. But that uh, that stored procedure would act as a smart contract inside the database. So it'd be connected to your level one, but it would be and managed by your your level one. But it would be operating inside of 
your traditional database. So what's the advantage of having a Sprock and a, a smart contract? Um, it depends on where your data is, right? And that's what, when we integrate with uh, more traditional systems, legacy systems especially, this is a pretty amazing capability because a lot of these things will already be written, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they might just need some ledgering or they might need uh, a further interchain where it might, you know, uh, connect to Dragon Chain and then uh, also operate something on, on one of the other supported interchains. Interesting. Yeah. Do you think this is going to help adoption? Because, you know, one of the things I see is is there's hardly any enterprises out there with, with blockchain engineers or blockchain administrators, right? And so... Right. There's not really a person to operate the blockchain within businesses. So, do you think this is going to help with like the adoption and, and those things? I would hope so. Um, and it might be. Uh, 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 a, I don't know how you say it. Like a, it's it's somewhat of a of a, a stretch at first because uh, just like sysadmins can now use Dragon Chain with you know it's like a you you don't have to be a pure coder if you're a script writer that does glue code on. You know, pulling systems together, you can you can write that into a smart contract. I mean, much the same way a, a DBA or some other you know data architect could start building smart contracts inside of their you know deep inside of their databases. So you think about with you know big big data applications. You think about with you know any legacy um, systems. It's pretty important, pretty amazing, right? So excellent. Well. Anything else about Postgres before we, we move on? <laughs> um, more, well, more to come. You know, we'll, we, we think uh, it, it might be one of the um, strategic uh, bounties that we put out there. For oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, so. Why don't you explain what the bounties are? In, okay, in, so in, yeah, in we're, uh, we're, we're going to have a, a page and... Uh, wait, wait, wait. So, um, so, so, <laughs> so, so, step back. What, what, what's, is a program, is it a, is it a, a, what is this? Is it a website? Yeah, it's a it is a uh, organizational program, right? Uh, there there will be a website that has a, uh, a list of projects categorized. Some of them will be featured, um, uh, where a lot of them will be either us or customers. Things that <clears throat> aren't top of priority, where we don't have our people working on it right now, but it's a way to scale it. Where we need this built. And it's going to take us a few months to get to it, so why not put a bounty on it and see if someone else wants to build it earlier, right? And you know, start building in. And we already have some people on the outside that are wanting to do this, and uh, it's also a good chance for us to figure out who we might want to bring in uh, and hire, right? So it's pretty neat stuff. And so we'll have that list there. There will be different scores. There will be criteria for acceptance. Some of them will be more competitive, where the first one will get more money, the second one will get you know, a little less, but mm -hmm. we'll still pay it. Um, and uh, there'll be some of them too that are really simple and some of them that are, that will become products, I think, so. So is this um, all built on open source or wh how yes. is the, yeah. the code gonna happen? Yeah, um, it, uh, I think across the board, I'm pretty sure, uh, every one of them will be required to be open source. So anybody who writes it, We'll have to agree, yes, so we'll release this, uh, and I don't know whether we do Apache or, or um, MIT or something, but we'll, we'll, we'll say you have to uh, release it as open source. Um, and I think there will be tiers, too. You know, you build it, you get something, you have uh, proper unit tests, uh, other testing in it, you'll get something, you get documentation, you'll get something more, you write a blog uh, post uh, describing it, or you know, build out some examples, you'll get more, so. We're gonna build it up so that it's you know you because some people can't write it's like oh, I can write the code but I'm, I'm I can't write a blog so we don't want to require that but we'll we'll give bonus oh no or, or maybe get a team right maybe you, it's like look I'll I'll write this you you write the blog we'll you know we'll smell together yeah yeah so hopefully nice. it works out.